Greetings everyone, welcome back to another video today, and today I'm going to do a ranking of all live-action Batman movies, worst to best. So, since I include the Superman reviews with a ranking of the films, I decided to do the same thing for Batman. Just like I said in the Superman review, not Superman review, Superman ranking, I will not include Batman v Superman or Justly because they're just movies that have those two characters, but are not basically directly towards them. Sure, Batman v Superman has their names in the title, and it's about both of them, but that's the problem, it's about both of them, and I did include Favorite Jason on Nightmare Up Street ranking and Friday 13th ranking, but the Friday 13th ranking didn't feel complete if I didn't add it, so that's why I added it, but as for the Superman movie ranking, it felt complete anyway, so pretty much I didn't need to include BVS, because it just felt more like a pre-Justice League movie, because, you know, it wasn't just Batman Superman movie, there was also Wonder Woman, so... Yeah, I'll just say it's more of a prequel to the Justice League, and that's pretty much what it was. It was sort of a Man of Steel sequel, with, but with Batman, Wonder Woman, and sort of a Justice League prequel. That's pretty much BVS to describe it. It's, a, it's Man of Steel 2, but setting up the Justice League, and has Batman, Wonder Woman in it. Number 8 is Batman Robin. Do I really have to say anything why this is at the lowest spot? Do I? Do I need to rant again? Yeah. Let's just move on. Go watch my review if you want to. Number seven is Batman Forever. So, pretty much after Batman Returns was very dark, the studio wanted to sell merchandise because, you know, McDonald's toys and stuff because of the animated series at the time and stuff like that. And Batman was more for kids because they thought superhero was just meant for kids and just that was it, but it was meant for all ages. So they decided to make a, a big budget 90s McDonald's com toy commercial. Pretty much, this is the movie. Batman Forever. The 90s... The, nine, the 90 to the, the two hour do McDonald's commercial. So... Yeah, it's a big 90s big 90 minute big toy commercial pretty much. So yeah, Jim Carrey is the Riddler. He's good, but I feel like he was trying to be too funny, but he's still a great actor anyway. Tom Lee Jones is awful as Two-Face. He is just awful. Like I have nothing else to say about him. He's just awful. Chris um Chris O'Donnell as Robin is okay. Val Kilmer is not a very good Batman. He His voice doesn't sell it for me because Michael Keane did a great job in the last two movies. And Val Kilmer is supposed to be playing the same Batman. And with Brandon Ralph as Superman, he's portraying the same Christopher Reeve Superman. But he did a great job at portraying Christopher Reeve Superman. And I can't say the same for Val Kilmer. So Val Kilmer didn't do a great job. So my thumb is down on this movie. Yeah, it's not a good movie. Number six is Batman Returns. So, I have mixed feelings on this one. While I did enjoy Batman 89, I personally didn't enjoy the sequel as much. Like, Superman 2, I did not enjoy as much as the original film. And personally, Batman Returns has its moments. Like, there was a lot of good moments and a lot of bad moments. Personally, the bad stuff was Batman was not in the film that much. Penguin got more screen time than him, where it felt more like Penguin was the protagonist. And Batman was there because it still has to be a Batman movie. Movie. And Batman was killing a lot of criminals, where I just felt like he was a murderer. It's like in the first movie, Joker pretty much broke his code when he remembers that Joker killed his parents. So, yeah, I wasn't a fan of all that. And so let's talk about positive. So I like Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. I like Danny DeVito's Penguin. Michael Keane still does a good performance of Batman, despite how his Batman is being portrayed. The music is good, but not as good as the first movie. So, yeah, I would say my thumb is in the middle. This one's not that bad. This one's okay. So, that's pretty much way to say Batman Returns. Batman Returns is just okay. Number five is The Dark Knight Rises. So, when I first saw this movie back in the theater, and this was the only Batman movie of the Dark Knight trilogy that I saw in the theater, because I wasn't born yet when Batman Begins came out, and I was too young to see The Dark Knight, because I pre the, the time where I was allowed to see movies in the theaters was when I saw The Incredible Hulk. But I didn't see him through most of it. I actually left the theater, but it was still my first viewing of the movie. But pretty much when I saw the Dark Knight Rise in theaters, I was not a fan of that at first. I didn't like how Joker wasn't in it, and I didn't pretty much like... Well, pretty much as a little kid, I just cared for seeing the Joker, and Joker was not in the movie, and that's what I didn't like. And I didn't like how tall I didn't look like how she did in the video games, because, you know, as a little kid, you can't really, you know, little kids and stuff. But pretty much, um, now that I'm rewatching it, 
because I have watched it over and over, and I have actually gone to like it over the years, and I will say that I actually really do like this movie. But when it comes to the Nolan trilogy, my opinion has never changed, mostly on what, like, was the best of the trilogy and which one was the least entertaining. This has always been the least entertaining of the trilogy, in my opinion. This is still a great Batman movie, one of the better DC movies to this very day. But personally, I don't think it's as 100% perfect as the other two. Mainly because I feel like it went on for too long. It started off pretty slow, but then it started to get really fast-paced and started to get much better. And I kind of wish we at least got one mention of what happened to Joker and where he is, but they don't bring him up. And we do know what happens. He was locked in Arkham Asylum all alone. So that's really one complaint I really have. And the one thing about Johnny Blake finding out Bruce Wayne is Batman because he recognized the look on Bruce Wayne's face. I found that a little bit silly. And I feel like they it's one of those things where a third movie tries to explain some backstory. Uh, on ex- backstories that never happened in the previous movies. So, you know, kind of like what Friday the 13th Part 3 originally was. But then when the other movie, you can now say it makes sense in the timeline. So yeah, my thumb is up for this movie, and this one's a 9 out of 10. This one's really good. Number 4 is Batman 1989. This film is an iconic classic and holds up as one of the better superhero movies to this very day, along with the original 90s Human Ninja Turtles. Jack Nicholson is phenomenal as the Joker. Michael Keane does a great performance as Batman. The music is beautiful. The art and mysterious cinema style. The shots. Everything is just flat out gorgeous in this movie. And it's an iconic classic, and the theme song is just beautiful. And while it did have some minor changes to the comic books, I will let it pass, because I do like the idea of Joker killing Batman's parents for this kind of movie. If it was from other incarnations, like the DC, like Batman the Animated Series, if they used that, I probably would have been a fan. I would not have been a fan of it. I would have preferred if they did Joe Chill, but they did do Joe Chill, which I'm glad. But for this movie, I do like the idea of it. I like how they were trying to do something interesting. But I am not a fan of Batman killing, however. Like, I would have preferred if he'd brought Joker to justice and have Joker return for the next movie. But we can't get what we always wish for. So, my thumb is up for this movie. It's a great Batman movie. If you're a huge Batman fan and you love the music in all the Batman movies, then you'll most likely love this theme song. Number three is Batman Begins. This is one of the best comic movies I have ever seen. It is very well written. The music is flat out beautiful. The cinematography is gorgeous. And it's a redemption to the Batman character for movie audiences. Because after the monstrosity that was Batman and Robin, Christopher Nolan saw it and it's like, that's not Batman. We need to make Batman great again for the big screen and movie audiences. And to make him dark again for how he should be and how he always was. And Christopher Nolan did that with this very movie. Scarecrow is awesome. Rachel Gould is awesome. Christian Bale is perfect as Batman. All the actors for this movie was perfect. They had great casting choice. And it's probably some of the best actors you'll ever see in comic book movie history. Along with the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. Like, those, those two trilogies alone had phenomenal casting choices. Like, this movie is awesome. Everything is beautiful from start to finish, and it pretty much is a love letter to you if you're a hardcore Batman fan. So my thumb is a 10 out of 10 thumbs up for this movie. Go watch the movie for yourself. It's a masterpiece. Number two is The Dark Knight. This movie is a masterpiece. I have to say at the beginning, this is the greatest comic book movie of all time, if not one of the greatest comic book movies of all time, because we haven't gone to the greatest one yet. But The Dark Knight, in my opinion, is the second greatest comic book movie of all time. Nothing can top it. Heath Ledger was perfect as the Joker. Two-Face, the actor playing Two-Face was criminally underrated for the amount of screen time he had. And he was mostly Harvey Dent for the film, but he is still was still a great actor. Rachel was great. Alfred was great. Batman was great. Lucius was great. All the characters in this movie was great. Like the from the acting, from the characters, from the music, to the fight scenes. Yes, the fight scenes. The fight scenes are actually really good because, sure, they're not the best, but once you but the music saves it because the music is really good in these movies. And The Dark Knight is pretty much a movie. Like, the whole Dark Knight trilogy, when I watch Batman Begins, I feel like I was, I feel like I'm always like, damn, that was a good movie. I gotta watch the other two. But like, that's the thing with Batman Begins and The Dark Knight Rises. When you watch those two movies, you have to watch the other two. But when I watch The Dark Knight, I can just watch it on my own. Because The Dark Knight feels like it's just its own movie. Like, if you want to watch Batman Begins, I think you should watch the other two as well. But as for The Dark Knight, you can just watch it on your own. So for that, The Dark Knight is my second favorite comic movie of all time. Solid thumbs up. Number one is Joker. 
this is the best movie I have ever seen in my entire life. Like, I haven't seen a movie this good since The Dark Knight. And I thought no movie could top The Dark Knight. In my opinion, The Dark Knight remained as the greatest movie of all time through pretty much my whole life up until this movie happens. The Joker has great cinematography, great acting, emotional scenes, and great music. And pretty much you feel sympathy for Arthur and what he became. And there was a certain point where I felt very depressed and I almost gone to a point like that where I feel like no one knew I existed. I feel like I was just ignored by everyone except for my family, of course, but mostly by my friends or everyone at school. But And I felt related to Arthur. Of course, I wasn't going to go crazy and does what he, do what he did. But pretty much, I felt related to him for a moment. And I felt, I was kind of, and I was rooting for him. Like, you were rooting for the bad guy in this movie. And it's like, you felt satisfied when Thomas and Martha Wayne got shot, and you always felt sympathy when they got shot. But here, you're just rooting for them. Like, when he, when the, when Joe Chill, well, not Joe Chill, but it probably is him. But when he takes the pearls, it was like a screw you. I, I don't want to say, okay, I'm just going to say it. It was like a fuck you, bitch thing. Like, it was like, fuck the rich, pretty much. So, yeah. And the whole cinematography, like I said, the ending where Joker gets off from the police car... And then pretty much, like, you know, use the blood as a red smile. Like, that was a great shot. Like, it was amazing. For that, Joker is the greatest movie of all time. So that was my ranking of all the Batman movies worst to best. So let me know what you guys think of that. And here, this screenshot right here is a tier list uh, of all the DC live action movies I've seen. And you can see Catwoman still on the bottom. Pretty much saying that I haven't watched them and I'm never going to watch them. So pretty much this is all my opinions on the DC movies best to worst. From Masterpiece to Bad and yeah, to the one on the bottom. So yeah, guys, I'm officially done reviewing DC movies. I reviewed all the DC animated movies, at least all, yeah, actually, no, I reviewed all the DC animated movies, I reviewed all the live-action DC movies, and I reviewed the majority of the DC shows, live-action and animated, and pretty much I'm done. I'll see you guys next time when I do DC with Peacemaker and the Arrowverse and the last few DC animated movies, mainly the ones that are in the DCAU and the Teen Time Trouble in Tokyo film. Pretty much just those three things, and... That's it. I got nothing to do other than just to review future DC movies after that and future DC shows. So pretty much, I'll see you guys next time when I review Peacemaker or I'll make an update video.